Rockies to the Appalachians. Go figure. That's pretty cool. We're not doing so bad in the Cherokee 6, actually. Look at this. We're doing almost Saratoga speeds there, 181. Now we're going to talk about why having airplanes have been so beneficial. Can you think of a few, son? All right, we got the mixture. We got the prop. We got rain. Oh, man, look at the scenery, son. Very nice. Doing an approach with a lot of rain. Oh, my goodness. That's not bueno. Just picked up like... All right, guys, here we are. Here we are on another series on this flight to Kentucky. We're breaking them down because uh, I don't want to make the videos too long, and this flight is a pretty long flight. Uh, we're not doing so bad in the Cherokee 6, actually. Look at this. We're doing almost Saratoga speeds there, 181 ground speed, because we're getting some pretty darn good tailwinds. Not bad at all. Saratoga speeds here, baby. We're doing 180. We just, oh, we almost, we were almost at 190. Yep. But anyway, guys, now we're going to talk about why having airplanes have been so beneficial. Can you think of a few, son? Uh, like if we wanted to go to um, like Dallas or Florida for um, like a holiday. If we were driving uh, to Dallas, it'd be 12 hours. To Florida, it'd probably be like almost a full day. But in the plane, you could do there. Uh, you could get there in a day, and uh, to, or to Florida in, um, in a day, which is like nine nine hours at this right? Yeah, about like, nine, nine and a half. In the Saratoga, it took us about seven or so. Then to go to Dallas, it's like five in this one, and then like three and or three or four in the other. Well, it's more like four and a half in this one, and it would be like three and a half in the Saratoga. So, absolutely. So, yeah, we can get to destinations really fast. Yeah. And that is pretty cool. Whenever, there's been times that we were able to do trips that we would, nor, we would not have been able to do had we not had this airplane. There's no way that we would do what we do if we had to drive. Okay? Like Christmas time, for example, we like to go on vacation. And we like to go to Dallas, or we like to go to Florida, like uh, Javier was saying. Now we might be going to Kentucky. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'll be going to Kentucky here pretty often. At least once a month is what I'm thinking. Either driving or flying. I prefer to fly, no doubt about that. Just attach the trailer to the back and take off. Yeah, we could probably put wings in the trailer and take the trailer. That'd be pretty cool if we could do that. I have to tow the trailer. I have to take the trailer to the uh, property. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of... Uh, it'll be a little bit of suffering for me at first. Uh, because I'll probably have to do a lot of these trips by myself. While I get everything situated and every, uh, you know, a lot of things moved to the new house. It'll be an adventure, that's for sure. But having an airplane has been extremely beneficial because uh, not only that, it's helped my businesses grow. Like I said, when I first got the Cherokee 6, uh, I talked about it on previous videos. When I first got this airplane about a decade ago, uh, it was, you know, to maintain my properties in Dallas. I would load this thing up with my... Uh, with my paint sprayer and all of my tools that I needed to fix up the house you, uh, in between tenants. Go, uh, and uh, and that's one of the main reasons I first bought this uh, Cherokee 6. And then we started using it for other business uh, ventures and personal ventures. And every, every time I do a trip, I always, I always try to connect it with a business. So if I do business, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of personal. And if I do personal, I'm going to try to do a little business. Okay? That, that's just what I do. But it's helped the businesses grow. Not only that, how, how has life been for you having an airplane? Like, can you imagine us not having an airplane? I mean, I can imagine us not having an airplane, but it sucks. It would suck, right? It, it would not be the same. I mean, uh, yeah, getting from place to place. And now we're in the soup, guys. Yep, now we're out of it. Yeah, we're, we're in and out of clouds. And this, these clouds are not really bumpy, so I don't mind going in, into these clouds. Otherwise, I would have already asked for deviations. We're, uh, we're approaching them. And 
and we got to look out for some storms in the distance. We're we're painting some in the uh, in, in the radar, but yeah, it's not so bad. This one's not painting them as much, so we'll we'll have to see how bad they really are. Call clear and stand by, please. But that that, that is what's so cool. You know, we got onboard weather. Okay, there's our radar and all that good stuff, and uh, we have it here as well. So that'll get us out of trouble. The one thing I like about the Turbo Saratoga also is that it has the lightning detector. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we don't want to go through that. No way. And approach. Uh, Saratoga 3620 Whiskey. We see a buildup uh, up in the distance. Like to request uh, 5,000 if we could. Zero Whiskey, Roger. Contact Lexington Approach 120.15. Make a request with them. 120.15. Thank you, sir. 20 Whiskey. Lexington Approach, good afternoon. Saratoga 3620 Whiskey with you at uh, 7,000. Like to request 5,000 for a buildup. 3620 Whiskey, Lexington Approach, Lexington Altimeter 299 or 1. 2991 Whiskey. 30 Whiskey, still maintain 5,000. 5,000, 3620 Whiskey, thank you, sir. Better late than never. Road Spirit, 827 Charlie Tango, like to request uh, deviations to the left here for a buildup. 827 Charlie Tango, turn left heading 3, or actually 290, vectors around that weather. So the, yeah, we uh, we asked we asked for that uh, for lower because I, I just you know it's cool going in these clouds and actually these clouds are not so bad but I don't know what's ahead that's the thing we can't see anything as you can see by this front camera we can't see a darn thing so I don't want to be caught up in an embedded thunderstorm and then we're painting some red here so that's why I asked for lower so that I can be below the cloud deck and so that I can see where I'm going in and out of. Uh, you know, but like I said, these clouds so far, they're not bad, but uh, I just want to play it safe, that's all. Yeah, having airplanes have been extremely beneficial. I think it enhanced our lives, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's really cool because, uh, because again, whenever we get family and friends over, I give them airplane rides, and boy, they, they are uh, totally fascinated. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they tend to think that, you know, smaller airplanes are more dangerous than commercial. And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, commercial, uh, you know, even, even, even birds can bring them down, you know. Uh, they're very sensitive. The thing is, with commercial, the difference is the pilots do have a lot of training consistently. So that keeps them, that alone keeps them safer. And, yeah, here we are getting below the cloud deck just as I thought. And that's what, I'm th that's what I'm saying. On the other video, I talked about, you know, being a pilot makes you smarter. And a lot of, a lot of those times is because of the decision-making that you always constantly have to do. You always have to monitor Kilo everything. Kilo, turn right and right here's on. one of those, uh, here's one of those examples, okay? okay we asked for lower so that we can be below the cloud deck so that we can see ahead of us, okay? We are IFR, but nevertheless, yeah, when, when I can't see through the clouds and I see those clouds building up, Jet Edge 91, I, I don't feel comfortable Edge. going through those clouds at all. Jet Edge and again, 91. these clouds have been very smooth, so, yeah. And, Tango Kilo. you know, so this, this decision-making is, is, is crucial to being a pilot. You have to be sound at your decision-making. But there it is, uh, guys. I tell you what, uh, yeah, being a pilot has been one of the best experiences ever. And what's more great about it is that I get to share that experience with my family and friends. And uh, like I said, it just, it, it, it has enhanced our life. And here it is, you know, we, we, we also got a Turbo Saratoga because uh, since I travel quite a bit for business trips and things of that nature, then I wanted something faster. But I cannot get rid of the Cherokee 6 because the useful load will be able to accommodate my family whenever we go on trips, where the Saratoga is not going to be able to do it. It doesn't have enough useful load. So that's the beauty about this uh, Cherokee 6 is, you know, when they made this Cherokee 6, they did a remarkable job keeping it basic so that you can have a high useful load. And then when they started doing the Lancers and the Saratoga, they started loading it up with air, air conditioning and all that stuff. The, of course, the retractable gear and all of that plays a, a big role. 
and, uh, and as a result, you get a lower useful load. So all four of us plus luggage and fuel, it's just, it's just not going to happen on the Saratoga. So, so that's why I cannot get rid of the Cherokee 6. However, However, things could change. Like, let's say, for example, if we end up in Kentucky, like, full-time, then, yeah, chances are, actually, that I would get rid of the Saratoga before I would get rid of the Cherokee 6. Because flying in the East Coast and in lower elevation, no problems in the Cherokee 6. This airplane handles really well. And like I said, it has a high useful load. So... The reason for the Saratoga now, like I said, is because we're in Denver, and we travel. Well, I travel long distances quite a bit, so I wanted I wanted something faster, and at the same time, I wanted to experiment with the retractable gear, build some time with with a uh, retractable, and then also I wanted a turbo engine so that I can have that turbo experience. And I will I will be honest with you, whenever you have that turbo experience, yeah, it's hard to really just settle for normally aspirated. When we departed Denver on our way here, we asked for 9,000. It took forever to get a 9, to, to 9,000. In the Saratoga, oh my gosh, it takes no time. Even when we climb to 15,000, you know, we still get, we can do 1,100 feet a minute, but I keep it around 800 or so. But you make it there in no time. With a normally aspirated engine, as you climb, you lose your performance. And with the Saratoga, I keep it at like, you know, 75% power, whatever I need to climb, all the way to 16, 17,000 before I start losing manifold pressure. So that's the beauty about the Saratoga, uh, having a turbo. But the airplanes have been extremely beneficial for us. Uh, my wife loves flying. My family loves flying. So if we were to go on a trip and we were, we were to ask any of them, would they rather drive or fly, what would you guys say? Probably fly. Probably? I mean, most likely. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he says probably, but no, it's no probably. It'll be more than likely. Uh, the only times that we have elected to drive is when the weather conditions just would not cooperate. Dad, look, whoa. Yep. So, so. My son wants me to show you this, this, this here. Uh, looks like rain. Yep. Looks like a little bit of rain there falling. It's pretty crazy. Okay. But yeah, guys, uh, you know, having an airplane has been extremely beneficial for the family. You know, we're, we're very privileged. I'm glad that I, uh, you know, flying has been one of these things that I always wanted to do ever since I was younger. I got my pilot's license, and, uh, and it was for this purpose, just to fly around. I, I never wanted to be a commercial pilot. That would be too boring for me. Too systematic. So with, with an airplane, yeah, you, you know, you can pretty much go about, do what you want to do. And uh, like I said, you can get there faster. You can bring long distances within reach. So guys, uh, let's, uh, let's prepare for this landing so that you can see this incredible place in, uh, in Kentucky. Uh, especially this airport that we're about to go into. Beautiful. This airport is beautiful, absolutely. It's beautiful. Uh, we still don't see any hills yet, but we're about to approach some of the hills. And yeah, this airport, like I said, it, it's extremely... It, the, the scenery is just it's, it's incredible. I cannot wait to go uh, to Kentucky and fly around the East uh, Appalachians. I cannot wait. From the Rockies to the Appalachians, go figure. We'll be in both sides of the mountains, the West Mountains and the East Mountains. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, let's get ready for this landing. Big Sandy, uh, Saratoga 3620 Whiskey now six miles out on the RNAV 21, full stop, Big Sandy.
pressure, we got the prop, we got rain, we got the uh, fuel pump on, we got all the lights on, and we got the runway lights on. Now we're going to be looking for the runway. Minimums are going to be 1480, and they are set. And I see the runway. Yeah, we're good. Oh man, look at the scenery, son. Very nice. Doing an approach with a lot of rain. But we can see the runway, so we're good. Oh my goodness. That's not bueno. Just picked up lightning. Just picked up lightning. Approaching minimums. Five hundred. Well, that's not bueno. Minimums. There is minimums. We got the runway in sight. We'll continue landing. Big Sandy, Saratoga now, short final, runway 2-1, full stop, Big Sandy. Let's get this thing on the ground. Five, son, and it's 507. Big Sandy, uh, Saratoga now clear of the active, Big Sandy. That lightning was close. Yeah, son, that was very close. Oh, I heard the uh, thunder through the headphones. Yep. Oh, crap. I think he wants me over there, okay. Is that Gary or is that another guy? Because he's got another guy here, too. Well, this turned out to be a very interesting approach. This storm cell approached very fast and it sneaked up on us. When I started the approach, we were actually in between cells and this cell caught up to us very fast. But other than that lightning, the approach turned out to be smooth, the winds were very light, and the runway was always in sight. At that point, I felt the best option was to get the airplane on the ground as opposed to aborting the landing. Aborting meant that I would have to climb and get back into the clouds. And as I mentioned before on this video, I don't like getting into clouds unless I know what I'm getting into. And make sure you check out the next video. Javier and I will be taking a tour of our new 14 acre property in Kentucky. Whoa, that's not bueno. We're exploring the Amazon rainforest. Man, this is pretty awesome. Here's all the wood all the wood that I'm gonna have to burn. Oh look, it's got little fishies. I'll also be faced with a very tough decision to keep the animals that are already on the property or not. And don't forget to comment, like, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have a great day my friends.